When presented with a set of options, we tend to gravitate towards the middle. We find an option more attractive when it is nestled between two extremes. This phenomenon is called extreme aversion. This tendency can also make us susceptible to manipulation. Let's do a quick test. You've got two options for dessert. Option A, a small piece of chocolate cake. Option, a medium-sized piece of chocolate cake. So which one do you go for, A or B? Make a mental note of your choice. Now, let's shake things up a little bit. This time, you've got a third option. Option A, a small piece of chocolate cake. Option B, a medium-sized piece of chocolate cake. And option C, a large piece of chocolate cake. Now, which piece of chocolate cake are you reaching for? In the first scenario, you might have thought that the medium-sized cake was just a little bit too indulgent. Perhaps you went for a small piece. But after introducing a larger piece into the mix and suddenly that medium-sized slice seems just right, this mental shortcut is often used to manipulate our decision-making process. Consider this, you are shopping for a new TV. There are three options, priced at $299, $399, and $799. You don't want the cheapest one. You worry it may be lower quality, but you also don't want the most expensive one. And you land on the $399 TV, feeling pretty good about your choice. But wait a minute. Have you thought that $799 TV was just a decoy that was added to your choice set to shift your attention from the $299 and $399 comparison to weighing up $399 and $799 option? In another experiment, researchers gave participants a case to judge like they were in a jury. When given the choice between a manslaughter or murder conviction, 47% chose manslaughter. However, when a third choice of special circumstance murder was introduced, the percentage of participants choosing manslaughter plummeted to just 19%. Let's look at extreme aversion in professional settings. You're at work and your organization has a program A in place to achieve a purpose. Program A has not quite hit the mark. It's not producing the results you are hoping for. Then a colleague suggests implementing a new initiative, Program B, to serve the same purpose. So here are your options. Option A, stick with Program A. Option B, keep Program A going and also roll out Program B. Option C, Abandon Program A and fully implement Program B. Now, for many of you, Option B might seem pretty attractive, right? It feels safe, less risky. You keep the old while trying out the new. But here is where extreme aversion can lead us astray. By choosing to implement both programs at the same time, we may be stretching our resources too thin we could end up with two ineffective programs instead of one that could really make a difference. Remember conjunction fallacy I introduced in my earlier video. The conjunction fallacy sneaks in when you consider two specific conditions, the successful implementation of both program A and program B at the same time as being more probable than a single condition either program A or program B working independently. Why do we have extreme aversion? It has something to do with another mental shortcut, risk aversion. Our brain is a vigilant guardian, constantly working to protect us from potential harm and to ensure our survival. One of the ways our brain does this is through something called risk aversion. We tend to play it safe, Risk aversion is our instinct to stay away from risky situations that could lead to harm or loss. We stay away from tigers, lions, and alligators. We choose not to live in deserts. 
risk aversion is instrumental in our survival as a species. But when it comes to decision making, particularly in the modern world, where the number of options is often a large number and the threat are not always life or death, this instinct of risk aversion can sometimes lead us astray. Extreme aversion, as the name suggests, is an extreme form of aversion or avoidance. When presented with a choice set that includes an extreme option, the amygdala in our brain, often associated with fear and anxiety, is likely to light up like a Christmas tree at the mention of that extreme option. We interpret the extreme as a risk. To play it safe, we shy away from extreme options, even when they might be the best choice. So the next time you are faced with a tough choice, do you follow your instinct to play it safe? Or do you evaluate your options carefully, identify whether a decoy option is added to manipulate you, and choose the path that truly leads to success? Start observing your decision-making process and those of others around you. See if you can spot instances of extreme aversion. Please feel free to share your comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.